Good day to one and all. Today, the topic of discussion is cannulation in cardiopulmonary bypass and myself, Emmanuel Rajasing is going to talk about the different types of cannulation, different types of cannula which we use during our regular cardiopulmonary bypass. The cannulation is of two types, arterial cannulation and venous cannulation. In this talk, we are going to discuss about the different arterial cannulation sites, the different arterial cannulas used in common practice and as well as the venous cannulation. Along with that, we will also discuss about the different cardioplegia cannulas used and the cardioplegic cannulation as well. The sites of aortic cannulation, most common sites of aortic cannulation are the aorta, femoral artery and the subclavian artery using a graft. Axillary artery is also used in some cases where the ascending aorta cannot be cannulated. The aortic cannulas are of three different types. One is the straight aortic cannula, second is the angled which has metal and plastic cannulas as well tips and the third is the elongated one piece arterial cannula which is a new cannula into the market where there is an elongated cannula which ensures less pressure drop which means the pressure drop across the cannula is minimized because uh, because it is elongated and in this cannula even using a small cannula high flows can be delivered to the patient. Today we are going to discuss about the different cannulas used during cardiopulmonary bypass. I have set of common cannulas which we are using during cardiopulmonary bypass and the firstly is the aortic cannula which, I, which is there right in front of you. This is a two piece aortic cannula where there is a whole straight aortic cannula with a connector connected so that you can use it directly using a 3 8 inch tubing connected to it. So this cannula, a small description about this cannula, if you can see the tip of the cannula is oval in shape and it is cut sharp. So this ensures the position directly into the aorta where you can pierce the aorta and it is can go inside. And the next to this cannula, there is a small enlargement, a bulb like enlargement, which is to fix the purse string sutures and hold the cannula in place with the aorta. And comes the spiral wounded um, reinforced uh, tubings where the total cannula is spirally wounded and it is reinforced inside. This reinforcement ensures that the inner diameter of the cannula is always constant even when you kink the cannula. For example, even when you kink the cannula, you can see the inner lumen does not get reduced. So that is why this reinforcement is placed. This reinforcement ensures that even in an accidental duration of a kink, the flows are delivered exactly to the patient. And next, there is a place where you can clamp the cannula so that while inserting the cannula, you can keep it clamped and then release it and de -air it. And for all those de -airing purposes, you can use this place to clamp. And finally, a 3 8 inch connector is kept so that a 3H tubing can be connected to this cannula. This ensures that the cannula along with the connector is a one piece tubing, but it, there is a molding connected here. The cannula is connected to the connector. So these cannulas are called two piece cannulas. The major issues with these cannulas are this two piece connection can get accidentally torn off and it can come out. So, accidental disconnection can happen. These are the reported incidents with these cannulas and this is the most common cannula which is used in the aortic position and it is placed in the ascending aorta. These cannulas come in variety of sizes. The sizes are mentioned here. This is a 20 French cannula but these cannulas come in a variety of sizes of starting from 18 French 
to 22 French. And these are adult cannulas for adult patients where the flow ranges from between um, two and a half liters to six liters. The next cannula which we see here is an arterial cannula. It is called EOPA cannula. The EOPA expansion is elong elongated one piece arterial cannula. So, this whole cannula comes in a single piece and it is elongated. So, the idea of increasing the size and elongation is to reduce the pressure drop across the cannula. So, this pressure drop is the pressure mentioned while the fluid is going inside the cannula and the difference in the pressure while the fluid is going inside the cannula and the pressure when it is coming out of the cannula. So, there is a pressure drop and this pressure drop is being minimized when you use a elongated cannula, which means this uh, elongated cannula can flow more with a reduced pressure drop with, with the difference in pressure the least. So, these cannulas also come with wire reinforcements and markings which says that how much you can insert into the iota. And these cannulas are designed for percutaneous insertions also. Apart from that, this is a clean cannula where you can insert it into the iota and have the measurements how much insertions you want to insert. And after that, you can slowly release the dilator. This avoids spillage of blood, slowly release the dilator and up till here you can release and then clamp the cannula so that while removing this dilator, there is no spillage of blood outside and the wastage of blood is avoided. So, once you clamp here and then you can remove the dilator totally uh, and again you can remove this cap and you can connect the patient's tubing, 3 8 inch tubing directly to this cannula. This ensures the cannula is free of uh, blood or uh, any blood spillage or free of air as well. So, these cannulas are specially designed in patients where calcified iotas are present and in patients where you suspect dissection, thin fragile iotas and smaller body weight patients where you have to give less amount of flows as well. So, these are the elongated or still an elongated um, 